Today, you're gonna to make your CSS custom properties dynamic. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now, Linode supplies servers that let you deploy apps, sites, and services that are both flexible and scalable. Linode's one-click apps make it easy to set up a web stack or a WordPress instance in under a minute. Simple pricing starting at $5 per month ensures there's no hidden fees or surprise bills. So sign up with the link below and use this code right here to receive a free $20 credit on your Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com. So today we're gonna to be covering something that's more of a beginner to a beginner intermediate topic that pertains to CSS and that is CSS custom properties and also more specifically, how to make them more dynamic in the sense of first capturing a user event like a mouse position or where they click the mouse and then passing that along through JavaScript to CSS in order to create some sort of interesting animation. So the one example, we're gonna do two examples, but the one example we're gonna have is this right here. So we're capturing where the mouse is and then we're basically animating or moving the radial gradient that's on this card. So very cool stuff. There's a lot of different use cases for this and I'll try to link some different uh, examples in the description and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I am in my code folder. We're gonna make a directory called varfun, I guess. And then we'll go ahead and CD into varfun and code period will open up Visual Studio Code. You guys know the drill at this point if you've been watching my channel at all. We're gonna create an index.html. We'll do a CSS folder with a main.sass file. We'll watch it. So you're gonna need the live SAS compilation extension. There it goes, we're gonna click that. And of course, you can come here, live SAS compilation, we want that one, and also live server we'll be using. Those are the two I'm always using during my tutorials. All right, so let's close this out and just hit exclamation point enter for this quick boilerplate. And then uh, we will also link up that CSS main.css file right there. All right. So to get started, we're not going to have any um, HTML tags outside of the body tag here, um, just for a quick demonstration purpose to try to get a, a real quick idea of how it actually works. And then we'll add um, some HTML in a bit. But first we're gonna have some uh, JavaScript to get this all up and running. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is get the body tag. So document, we're going to query selector and we're just gonna use query selector because we only want one element and not uh, multiple. And then we're just gonna do on click. We're gonna pass in the event into our function here. And at this point, you can console log the event. All right, and then in order for this to work, uh, we have to go to our main.sass, take our body selector, type in bo uh, not body, height, 100, viewport height, otherwise our click event won't get and won't actually work. Um, we'll also set margins to zero because I usually do that anyways. Um, so now if we go back here, uh, we click on this, we can see we have our event passed here. We have all this data from which we can work. So I, you could see page X and page Y. So if we go like right here and click, we'll see our page X and Y is five and three or five and three right here. So that's an important uh, piece of data. And of course, this event over here, we can change this up as well to on mouse move and we can um, get this as the mouse is actually moving across the body selector. Um, we'll do that in a bit. But what we want to do is first, before we get to, uh, to the meat of the JavaScript, we're gonna hop back over to our main.sass file. And what we'll do is we're going to have a before selector here. So we're gonna say and, and we'll say after. I decided to use after, not before. All right, and we're gonna say content empty. Position is gonna be absolute. Um, we'll say top zero, left zero. We'll have background. We're just gonna make that red just so we can see it well. And we're going to have height. And this is where we're gonna specify a variable, all right? So these are CSS custom properties as they're called. So we put var and inside a function and we simply pass in, let's say uh, y for the height. 
and then for width, we'll say var x. All right, so right now these aren't defined anywhere. Um, so the simplest way to define these, we could put these just as a property up here and just say 300 pixels, x, we'll say 500 pixels. So let's save this and see what has happened. There we go, 300 by 500. So that's not a very exciting way to use the CSS custom properties. It's obviously not interactive or, or anything like that. Um, so to make this interactive, let's take this off. What we can do is we can set it here based on this click event. All right, so the way to do that, we want to target the event, target.style, and then we can set a property. And we can set the property as being our variable. That's the property we want to set. And then we can use our back ticks here. And we can pass in, uh, we'll just do e.pageX. Remember, that's the one that we saw uh, in the console. And I think that's good. Nope, we have to put a, the actual unit pixels right here. And then do the same thing for uh, our Y. Just like that. All right, so let's save this. And there we go. Every time we click now, it is setting, and we can see this actually in the styles. So if you look at your body style, it's simply setting through our JavaScript, our vanilla JavaScript, the style attribute into setting the X and Y uh, custom property here to 536 and you know, base of where, wherever we're uh, clicking. So very cool. Uh, we can even make it animate if you wish, just by using the transition property and we can transition and simply say, I don't know, all one second. And there you go. The actual use case for this, you know, I don't, I don't know, see, I don't see why. I'm sure someone could come up with something cool. Uh, but we can also do this, as mentioned before, with on mouse move. So now, and it's a little bit slow here. It's kind of behaving very strangely. There we go. Not sure if that was because I had to uh, refresh or what, but yeah. And this, it's behaving like this because we have this transition on here. Probably not very performant. Now we take that off and there you go. Very cool. So hopefully you understand how this all sort of works. So let's put it in, uh, let's just give ourselves some practice through muscle memory and do a different one. So let's take this all off, or a different example basically. Um, we'll say, um, we'll do display grid and place items center, font family, we'll say new Nito, my new font that I've been using, color is gonna be white. All right, what is this? No, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I guess I had some type of typo. Um, and we're gonna come back here and put in element here. So we'll say um, card and we'll put in an H1 testing this, and also a P with lorem 30. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just by default, set these here in line, X with zero and Y as zero. And we'll get to this in a second. So now let's go back and we're gonna say card. We'll say background. And we're gonna use a radial gradient. So uh, you can work in these uh, sort of uh, animation-based, uh, I guess, user interactivity uh, within these different types of properties. One, of course, here, the one we're gonna try out is uh, adjusting the radial gradient value based on the custom property that's being adjusted from JavaScript. Uh, you can there's there's other ones that you can use as well, such as clip path. You can animate a clip path as well, and there's probably a lot of other ones that you could do. So radial gradient, 
we're going to say um, a circle at, and I think just by default, we'll just leave this, um, we'll just do circle here. Now, we're gonna say circle at zero pixels and zero pixels. There we go, sorry, I'm, I'm doing this kind of just off the cuff right now. Uh, and then we're gonna have just a radial gradient with just two different colors. Um, so we're gonna do 05DE7FF at 0% and then 0092EC at 100%. All right, um, next we're gonna have a border radius real quick of 15 pixels, um, padding, 1EM on the top and bottom, 2EM on the left and right. The width will be 40% of the body con uh, parent container. Also our H1 and P, we're gonna set pointer events to none. Um, and in fact, we're gonna comment that out just to show you why I was going to uh, do this. So right now it's not gonna be interactive, but we could see this is our um, kind of like, just like a, this brighter blue color right here at zero pixels, zero pixels. So that's top uh, from the top left. All right, so uh, what we can do now is instead of just hard coding some value in order to make it follow the mouse, we could say var x and also var y. All right, so let's save that. All right, so it doesn't look like it's working all that great. It's kind of moving, but kind of not. And that's because we need to come down here and create uh, something that's going to really make the center of that gradient follow the actual mouse. All right, so to do this, we're gonna say const x equals e dot page x, and we're gonna subtract it from the target offset left, and also change this to our card. And what offset left does is it gets the, uh, based on their, our target, which is their card right here, uh, it gets the pixel value of the actual container from the left of the browser. And then so we also wanna do this with Y. So we'll take Y, Y here, and then offset top. And then we'll just simply pass this in as X and Y. Let's save it, and there we go. Now notice how if we hover over this element right here, like this type element or this element, it doesn't work anymore or it doesn't, it just doesn't show up. That's why we need to go over here and just set pointer events, none, and there you go, it now works. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more stuff coming. I'll see you guys real soon, goodbye.